Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Spoiled Games. I am Adam Sessler, executive producer of Rev3 Games here at Revision 3. Um, this is a show to give the opportunity to talk about a game after all of you have played it. And today we are choosing to look at the ever-controversial, brash, and loud DMC Devil May Cry. Now, before we start, um, a, a word of warning. Uh, this is called Spoiled Games, and everything in the game is fair game. So we're gonna talk about the beginning, we're gonna talk about the ending. If you haven't finished it, you wanna see how it turns out, and you want surprises, stop now, go play it, and then come back. But for everyone else, welcome. And welcome to our two panelists, Brad Shoemaker, senior editor at GiantBomb.com, and Anthony Carboni of Revision 3, in particular of D News. Hey. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so Devil May Cry, our DMC, I, am, I, I think it's <laughs> important. You, have to, you have to say both in a row. DMC, or Capcom, yes, Devil May Cry. Mm -hmm. There you go. And now we will just call it what we so choose. <laughs> um, so this comes from a franchise that is well established from the PS2 era. Um, I remember playing it. I think both of you have played it. I think I've always been surprised at the amount of passion that surrounds it, as I never felt that the game itself ever had a good iteration. I mean, what, did, did you play the first one, Brad? Uh, yeah, I played the first one to completion and then kind of fell off after the second one. Really disappointed everybody. Uh, I actually went back and have started playing one again. Uh, and with that one, I think there's a fair amount of rose-tinted kind of nostalgia. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that one really shows its age. Yeah. I know that, I, you know, again, didn't play three and four, but I know that there are legitimate kind of mechanical reasons people like to go yeah. back to three and four, like they're really hardcore, a lot of depth to the combat, but definitely sort of a little bit of rose-tinted uh, glasses going on. And, and, and it did come from an era when a lot of the games coming out of Japan seem more innovative, seem more exciting. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember just the, the, the concept, guy behind Resident Evil, we now have a character with swords and guns. It really just, it, it sounded like very exciting dynamic in a way to move the, that, that, that combat forward. You, you've been playing the HD collection. I have, and... Um yeah, rose tinted's a good a good way to put it. <laughs> you know, the first one was was very much it, it started off as a Resident Evil game. It was going to be part of the series, so it was kind of just a more action oriented game built on that engine, and it really shows its age yeah. because of that. Because yeah. you have all those static camera angles, you have all those weird like you get caught in nooks and crannies, yeah. and then as they kind of got their hands on the action, the character just got sillier and sillier. Mm -hmm. Like story stuff just got weirder. I mean, and weirder. it was pretty silly at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, that, that that opening sequence where he's in the shop. Sure. And I think motorcycle a motorcycle comes, comes in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there's the one. Uh, my favorite one is the one from three, where he's uh, he's sitting in his bar and like kicking phones onto receivers <laughs> and like snarking at the phone and like spinning pizza around on his finger while he's killing demons and hitting you. <laughs> and you're just like, okay. Are we sure that this is the franchise yeah. that we want to stay so true to? <laughs> which, which I, I think br brings you to our point, which is what was essential to carry over from the first game? Because this game has generated so much controversy since it was announced. It doesn't have a Japanese developer. It has Ninja Theory, who are right. best known for Enslaved mm -hmm. and for uh, Heavenly Sword on, on, on the PS3. Uh, but everyone was worried, oh, they're going to ruin it. And I didn't know what was that essential part that was so at stake that had to carry over. I mean, yeah. do, do, do you have a sense of that? I, th I think it varies from franchise to franchise. Like, you know, we see a lot of reboots going on right now. You know, Tomb Raider is coming out, yeah. and and it's kind of it, it leads to the question like, what is a reboot? What do you go back and strip away? You know, and like in this case, it seems like they kept the broad framework. You know, you've got Dante, you've got Virgil. The kind of the demonic background is there, but everything else is fair game to kind of. And, and there's guns and swords. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, you can still shoot guys to keep them floating in the air, but beyond that, they kind of took liberties to, to change whatever they saw fit. And I think they, I think they tried to keep some of that attitude without, mm -hmm. while while kind of restructuring it for sort of a a world where we're not all obsessed with our Trigun DVDs. You know, uh -huh. it's been like <laughs> it's been like ten years, and so now they kind of like, well, what is like kind of this brash, smirky? kind of supernatural, like, tortured guy now. While there was a lot of vitriol about this game prior to it coming out, a lot of it centered on the character, mm -hmm. how they had changed him. He was the platinum-haired biker guy, and now he's dark-haired. Mm -hmm. And like, there actually is no automotive transport in the course of the new Devil May Cry right. game, but right. I kind of imagine him having a motorcycle. I mean, right. did you find it that dramatic a shift? Uh, it's pretty profound, yeah. I mean, you know, it, you can actually, if you go back to that first image they put out like two years before the game released, they actually pulled back from that some, like kind of that mug shot, if you remember. Yeah. He had the real dark, sunken eyes, like just looked terrible, like he looked like he was shooting up mm -hmm. five times a day. Uh, and they, you know, they pulled back from that and turned him into a little bit more of a club kid, but but yeah, it was a pretty profound difference from the 
old Dante to the new one. I think they kept a lot of stuff that was that was sort of essential visually. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. he's got he's got like the big coat. Yeah. He's got yes. like the low cut shirt. He's got like the kind of like if you look at his eyes and like his brow, they tried to kind of make like his facial structure very similar to mm -hmm. where you could believe like maybe this is the 19 year old version mm -hmm. of the guy from Devil May Cry sure. Three. Um, but it definitely like. No leather nipple strap. <laughs> like maybe we can get rid of that. Yeah. Maybe he just wears a shirt. I mean, I, I, obviously, in, in, in my review, I didn't like the original Dante. I thought it was a little bit just too cloying, and it was just mm. kind of playing to certain precepts. I, I, I think they they held true to that in this new Dante, where I was just like, oh, <laughs> just just please be quiet for a second. But I mean, I I, I can't figure out. This is for a large, large chunk of the game. How much of this is tongue firmly planted in cheek, mm -hmm. and how much of it is this earnest sense that there's something like to to idolize in in, in, in this version of Dante? Well, you kind of you love the story all the way through. I, yeah, for it's kind of just a sheer audacity yeah. and, and absurdity, you know. Like I, I I could never quite figure out if the developers took it seriously, but I sure as hell didn't, you know. Like right. I, I, that that's the part that keeps on getting me in that opening sequence. Where he's naked, yeah. and obviously Cat, the young lady yeah. with 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 the hoodie, is just blocking his his member. Sure. And <laughs> the slow motion pizza exactly. cross flyby. Exactly. And, yeah. and I thought, okay, this might be aping something. Though I still didn't really know what it was making fun of. Mm -hmm. But I would have to say that the, the, the tone seems to shift quite a bit throughout the course of the game. So that was that was kind of my problem with it. Is it was alternately very much. Very much like an early Peter Jackson or Sam Raimi movie. Like it was very Dead Alive sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was very Evil Dead 2 sometimes. And then at other times, you felt like you were watching Constantine or The Devil's Advocate. Sure. And I feel like I can deal with kind of the overwrought melodrama. I can I can love the like the stupid over the top. But when you mix the two of them together, they both tend to lose their power right. and kind and kind of just like weaken one another right. stylistically. Well, like you've, you've got Virgil like. One minute Virgil's talking about his responsibility to protect the human race, and the next minute he's making a big dick joke. You know? Yeah, it does, it, does, it does kind of go back and forth a little bit. But. Well, and, and then obviously the the part which I, I, I believe uh, everyone tried to withhold, even though it was out there on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, the scene where the platinum hair comes flying mm -hmm. on to Dante's head, uh. and he says, "Oh, not in a million years," yes. and, and, and and throws it off. Not in a million years. I mean, they're, 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 it's, they seem to be very aware of the controversy that's surrounding sure. the game. And I couldn't figure out. What their response was, like just you know, just go f yourself, yeah. or or that you know, actually this is kind of a silly thing to be making fun of. Right. I, I, I kind of when I first saw that, I sort of took it as a sort of thumbing their nose at the people mm -hmm. who had gotten upset about that because it's really not the key issue here as to no. whether this is a successful reboot or not. No, no. Now, now go, going back to the story, um, I, I found it. Audacity is a good word. I, I still don't know what to make with with with, with a lot of it because yeah. of the changes in tone that mm -hmm. you know. Cat. I mean, there's this whole bit in the car. Oh, the thing where Cat's with Cat. talking about like clearly being the victim of sexual abuse. Right. My foster father was a demon. He attacked me most nights. Which you know, I was a moment of like, hold on, whoa, yeah. hey, hold yeah, on, we yeah. had pizza over the penis a little bit earlier. <laughs> this, I mean, I, I still don't know what to make of right. that rather violent transition in the game. You, you could you could definitely level some criticism as to them sort of playing on. Sort of cliche gender roles and that kind yeah. of thing, you know. Although, you know, I, I felt like you know the, the the fact that she had come out and sort of ultimately escaped her her yeah. aggressor and, and and fought back was was kind of kind of satisfying. But no, yeah, I, I I think it was also I don't think I've seen a game that seems to be so aware of what liberties they can take because. I mean, does it take place in the real world to, to you guys? I mean, I, I I've never. And th this is very consistent with other Devil May Cry games. Mm -hmm. Where does it take place? Right, right up until right up until the end. Where where the the Hellgate closes and you have sort of things melding together, yeah. I would say like yeah, it could absolutely be mm. kind of real worldish. Other than other than Mundus's crazy Swan Tower that he lives in, <laughs> I was pretty much like okay, there's a real world because they're clearly trying to base a lot of this on on marketing and, mm. and being anti media and being kind of anti government, and so they had to kind of ground that. But you do spend like ninety percent of your time in limbo. Yeah. So you, you do kind of get this sense of like, well, maybe it isn't supposed to be because real. I, I like the idea of the way it was playing on what's clearly like a Fox News channel yeah. and a soda company, that that's how they're kind of reigning this control. It, it wasn't terribly original, right. but, I, I, there, but there was a lot of potential right like there. The, those thematic elements are painfully on the nose. You know? yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. like directly in the wake of Occupy, like here's this yeah. game where capitalism <laughs> sucks, man. Fuck <laughs> but, but, but again, it was the way it was presented. Like the characters believed it so hard, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I felt like even if 
even if tonally it was a little bit obvious. You know, like they, they presented it really well. Well, I think one of my things is I, I wish that sort of being too on the nose, like there were some things that they just flew by. Mm -hmm. They were they were just like, okay, this is what's going on, deal. Yeah. And I was really cool with that. But then there were some levels where they would just kind of languish on the theme, like the soda factory mm -hmm. level or... Um, in the warehouse? In the warehouse, yeah, yeah. When they were going into the warehouse, and suddenly these incredibly blase statements yeah. about time being spent in limbo, what that's yeah. about, and it's like, what are we talking about? And also, I didn't even really understand, wait, so is, is Dante aware of this? Right. Or like, has he already known about all this kind of weirdness, or is, is he being introduced into this kind of crazy world of angels, demons, humping, and then fighting each other? Right. Yeah, it's weird, because he does mention in the beginning, like, I've been dragged into limbo before, I know how to deal with this. And it's like, well, what are you doing there? Has this not, <laughs> yeah. has this not disturbed you at all? <laughs> have, have you noticed all the creepy messaging? <laughs> Maybe the building's leaning over you? So, so let's talk about Virgil, who mm -hmm. really does become his foil by the end mm -hmm. of the game, when you realize that they're kind of on the same side, but Virgil's kind of now turned into kind of a Leninist, who doesn't think mm -hmm. that the people, uh, when, 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 when freed, would actually make the right decisions. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I kind of saw that coming it from was, a mile it was away. Telegraph, pretty. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, that 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 character, who I don't recall being all that memorable from the other Devil May Cry games, I thought was at least something that helped balance out, you know, the the, the, the brashness and the the at least for me the obnoxious qualities of Dante. Sure. He gets bigger and bigger as the in the franchise as the yeah. old ones move on. Like he he takes on a larger and larger role. Yeah. So he was pretty. He was pretty true, he was put in a new setting, but he was pretty true to his character before mm -hmm. in, in the old. I can't get past his nice guy fedora. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to talk and I can't get past his nice guy fedora and his like his embroidered applique, like trench coat. <laughs> Once again, it just it feels like other 90s sensibilities. Yeah. That was a weird thing, they're trying to modernize it. Mm -hmm. 10 years, yeah, I mean, they've actually modernized it to the time period when the original Devil May Cry was released. Yeah. Because it really does seem like that now. Granted, I indulged in it, yeah. but that painfully hipster, right. foppish right. attitude maybe, during the swing era. Maybe it's yeah. secretly a period piece, and we just don't know it. You know? you know, there might be a whole new way to read this game that right. way. Um, anyway, let's. Uh, I, 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 you definitely commented on this, but the level design, the fun that they were able to have with Limbo throughout the game, sort of taking this ungrounded real world, yeah. and then just just making the bottom fall out from really, under it. It really just gave him carte blanche to go completely insane with that stuff. And I, I don't want to get too mechanical about it. Here's why I got this score, and then, you know, but yeah. the, 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 the sheer inventiveness of what they did with those levels and the way they animate and deform as you're going through them and all that stuff is what really kicked the game up a notch for me. Like, it was just, it almost made me think, like, you know, at its core, this is an action game, you know, you were supposed to play it and appreciate the like, fidelity of combat, but... Here's a good example of how different people can appreciate different mm -hmm. things in games. And like the, in, in this case, this was a venue for visual artistry. You know? It's just like here is yeah. somebody's, somebody is funneling their artistic talent into this canvas, and it looks absolutely amazing. And it's something I really appreciated. Yeah, whoever, I mean, the entire environmental team, mm -hmm. I think, just were like the all stars yeah. of that game. Yeah. It was just so, just so beautiful to see. Like we've seen this kind of idea of like the creepy cities and, and mm -hmm. things leaning in towards you before, but I've just never seen it realized yeah. so incredibly well. Like things just perspective forcing itself on you and things just crashing in on right. you. From like you really do get the feeling that the entire world hates you. Sure. Like, yeah. like <laughs> well, there, well, there it, it comes One of the moments when they really hooked me was that they primarily use the kind of the Splinter Cell style like titles yeah. on mm -hmm. the walls to direct you. It's like go this way, kill this stuff. But there was that one point where you Kill demon after demon for an entire level, and then one of those things pops up, and it just says "fuck you, Dante." Yeah, yeah I remember oh, that. Oh man, <laughs> the demons are so frustrated that you're kicking their asses <laughs> that they can't resist. You know, like, you do get the sense of the environment as a character yeah. because of its malleability yeah. Yeah. and the way it, it, it can react to you. Um, I, 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 I like the environments. I felt they were sometimes uneven, but when they got so inspired. Mm -hmm. In something that should have been pretty rudimentary, it was like, you know, subway tunnels mm -hmm. are just <laughs> modern sewers. Yeah. yeah. But, and, you know, I, I loved in that sequence when you got to really play with the environment. You have the train that's hurtling through, right. and you can knock enemies up into it, right. and, and they go splat. Yeah. The, the other was, I wish they had done more of it when you infiltrate the news headquarters, mm -hmm. and suddenly the graphics of a news yes. channel become yes. the yeah. environment. I, I really felt that they just. I, I could have spent three levels in something yeah. like that. that yeah. There was just so much potential. Yeah. I wanted to see more in there because that was just, it was a pretty se like simple grappling sequence mm -hmm. yeah. inside of that, but I wanted to see like things like angry headlines mm -hmm. flying at me, stuff sure. like things to avoid, more things to do in there, and I felt like they didn't take enough advantage of that mm -hmm. before I was out and I was in that boss fight, sure. which was a great boss fight, yeah. but, but I yeah. wanted more time in that actual environment. Yeah. It makes me wonder, 
Was the game originally going to be closer to what a Devil May Cry was, and then maybe the outcry about the reboot and the redesign of the character kind of gave Ninja Theory the opportunity to just go a little bit crazier and more wild? Because, I mean, yeah, the, there is a point where you feel the game is, you know, both with the platinum hair wig sequence and just the way it changes that it's almost starting to thumb its nose right. on expectations and the sense of sort of hallowed virtue and staying with tradition in these games. I, I would love to read a book about how this game came yeah. together over time. Like, there are the stories out there about how Capcom came in and helped with combat. There was the story that came out about them sending their Dante design to the brass in Japan, and Japan said, no, go crazier with it. Like, that's too much like the old one. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's hard to say, like, which influences kind yeah. of yeah. what and happened. It's kind, and it's kind of interesting with thinking about how early they start releasing art and mm -hmm. things like that for games now to kind of build that hype train. You wonder, if, you know, you think about it feels like it's going back and forth between being over the top and like too conservative sometimes mm -hmm. and you wonder if that was kind of like, oh, should we rein it in? Right. Like you wonder if they lost focus and they lost a little bit of confidence just on their own. M moving on to the combat, which really is the, the central element and, and it, to some extent there, there was the, the fun platforming with, with, with the hooks and the pulling oh, yeah. and the what have you. Um, I don't remember the combat so well from Devil May Cry, but I found the fact that I was able to do more faster and more effectively that they had respected it, but really improved on it Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. The, the thing they do that I really enjoyed was, so a lot of games in this kind of character action genre, they have, they have depth on specific, like you'll have one weapon that has like 500 different combo sequences you need to memorize, whereas this game has breadth where you have a lot of different weapons that kind of use the same. Like that, that one attack, it's like three, pause, two. Yeah. Like that that yeah. button sequence works across all those weapons. But since you can modify to the different weapons in the course of the combo, you don't have to memorize a lot of sequences. But you can right. do a lot of different things just by modifying. And I thought that I thought that was really smart too, because when you're in the middle of things, and, and especially when you're in some of those later later levels where it's like, oh, I got to switch to demon now, I got to switch to angel now. Like it's good to know that towards towards Y mm -hmm. is always going to get you right. closer. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about okay, I just switched to sword, I just switched to the arbiter. Right. What do I do now? You know. One of the things I was fascinated by in in your review, Brad, is. You really saw it was, easy, it was also very easy to just go down to the D-pad and switch out the yeah. weapons in its various categories, which I, I hate ever traversing yeah. down to it's, the D-pad. I was curious how much you were able to do that. It's, it's absolutely not ideal for sure because your, your left thumb should be occupied yeah. moving your character yeah. around, so you are kind of leaving yourself open for a second to do it, but if you really time it out with like, you know, there, there's a, enough animation priority where you can kind of queue up the weapon switch yeah. as you're in the middle of swinging the axe or whatever. Uh, I, it's not, it's not the most elegant solution, but you know, you can kind but of walk around it, it, it. It, it didn't occur to me, yes, there probably are power players that really can oh, be so diverse. And there are, there are, I don't know if you guys have gone and looked at like combo videos on YouTube now. I mean, there was the whole uproar about, oh, it's too easy to get triple S ranks in this game, mm -hmm. and like that, there's probably some validity to that, but if you step away from the scoring mechanism and yeah. just look at the kind of how creative you can get with the, com the combat, like the, some of the videos on YouTube are completely mind blowing. <laughs> I mean, actually, I, I, I want to talk about the scoring thing. I've never really liked scoring in games. I think that it's, it, it sort of disincentivizes the player from wanting to keep playing. Like, it, it only favors the master players. I understand that they want to have some type of recognition out there. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think it was, I was shocked at how easily I could get triple S's. That has never happened to me before yeah. in a game, so I knew something was afoot. But at the same time, it was more encouraging to get the sense like, hold on, so yeah. what I'm doing is kind of working. The game doesn't hate me for just making it through the level. Right. That, yeah, I, I, I felt that they started to at least flip in the other direction. And what I think has been a problem, like kind of an elitist problem that's plagued games yeah. of this type, which is it just seems very exclusionary to players that would like to actually engage with it. Right, yeah. right. And I don't think they, I don't think they Ninja Gaiden 3'd it by mm -hmm. any means. And I think that's what people yeah. were really afraid of, is like you're going to be able to get in there and just mash and everything's going to be cool. I, I think what people are discounting is like just like you have to change the style of the character and the style mm -hmm. of the world. There is a different there's a different expectation for difficulty now than there was then, yeah, and true. there's a different expectation in terms of how much time you're going to sit down. The average person is going to sit down and really like focus on memorizing this combo system sure. and getting really in depth with it. And what I liked is there are four additional difficulty levels. Yeah. And if you want to be that guy who played the old Devil May Cry, they have like when you go into those additional levels, they completely relay out where the enemies are. They completely change up combat. The scoring gets harder. So I feel like it's there for you if you 
you want it to be there. Right. But for somebody yeah, like yeah. me, I'm the same way. It's like, no, dude, I just want to play, and I don't want to take a uh, nap at some yeah. point <laughs> during the day. <laughs> on, on, on top of that, I mean, you know, you can argue that for the, the letter grades, the skill ceiling is lowered. That's you know, that's probably true. But they they added sort of the little modern niceties, like the like leaderboards on every specific level. Yeah. yeah. So if you want that fine gradation of skill, you've still got that numerical score, and you can still see what the rest of the world is yeah. doing there. So there is that room for you to ascend the ranks and say, hey, I'm the best at this level. The letters are the gold stars yeah, yes. for just getting they, something yeah, done. Yeah. And then the, 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 but the real scoring is <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah. right there on the leaderboard. And I feel like the side missions did like a great job mm -hmm. of scratching that itch too. Things yeah. like where you're dropped into an arena, it's like, okay, you can only use four moves, yeah. kill eight guys. Right. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Those, and those can be very hard. Those yeah. are crazy. And yeah, yeah it's like to, like to beat one of those, you really have to be on top of your game. Now, um, the, the, the enemies, I tended to like the beginning of the game more because you tend to get more enemies and that allows you to be a lot more diverse mm -hmm. with the move sex. I love the aerial moves. I found they were much easier mm -hmm. to pull off. It's really fun to look what you can do. As the game progressed and you, you started to find more and more enemies that you can only use a particular type of weapon mm -hmm. or there's a very particular region of their body. You know, they, they, there's the big fat thing. Yeah. He probably has a proper name that's arbitrary so I can't remember it. Um, that like I, I felt it started to slow down the combat. I, I like that that final level in hell, not the final boss battle. Um, just it was like okay, well now I'm just doing what I've done so many times in a small space. Yeah, it's it's kind of a different kind of challenge. Earlier on, you're sort of fighting against your own ability to diversify and, and manage a lot of different enemies at the, at the same time. And then at the end, like you said, they constrain what you can do effectively. So you're, you're having to excel in a different way, but I, I can totally see where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, I mean, it's just strategically, I, f I find that sometimes that works in games. I, uh, at least for me, it didn't it didn't work as well in, yeah. in, in DMC. I thought, I thought action was better on the first half and story was better on the second mm -hmm. half. Yeah, and they kind of they kind of flipped. <laughs> Actually, and, and with that, let's talk about the end of the game. Uh, Ends of games are a problem across yeah. the board. Yeah. And this one, yes, it was not surprising. Oh, look, Virgil's different than we thought he was. I, mean, yeah. I well, first he of all, everything Mundus. but like wring his hands yeah. and cackle <laughs> the whole way through. Mundus was kind of fun, yeah. kind of obvious. Yeah. Actually, I found all the other boss battles to be a lot more of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you the, the real boss battle right. is Virgil, mm -hmm. which. It suddenly it just asks you not to use all of your skills. Yeah. I was just like, hold on, I think this is like, where's the trick? Where's the trick? Uh, I, I, I think Patrick Klepek, your colleague, yeah. got really, really stuck on yeah. it. I, I did too. I, it took me. For, I probably sat there for 20 minutes fighting that guy before it was like, oh, I need to hit this and do yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, how? How? I mean, I, I, this is this is kind of a larger discussion about games. That final boss battle, they always seem to kind of just be so much smaller than the rest of the game that, mm -hmm. that precedes them. I mean, how, how important is that to, you know, sort of that, like that, that lasting impression you get from the game? I, I think boss battles are, are sort of, in general, just getting kind of outmoded as games get better. Because boss battles are always going to be, they can either be built, they can be built on one of two things. AI that we just don't have yet, and yeah. we can't make, or patterns. Yeah. And to play through, you know, a, a giant open world that feels like it's trying to kill you and you have a lot of freedom and you're making a lot of decisions and then be asked to memorize a pattern like mm -hmm. we've been doing since the dawn of time, it's like super underwhelming. Yeah. It's yeah. super underwhelming and especially when it's something where Virgil was entirely based on uh, using your evades, mm -hmm. which you could play through 90% of that game without ever getting your evades like really timed well. Yes. And I think that's the only place, the evades and the parries were the only place where the control came up a little mushy for me. Mm -hmm. Like when you've got to knock those blades back at Virgil, I was like, I feel like I'm timing this and why is this not happening? Like yeah, it's, it's, it's got that weird syncopated feeling yeah. where I'm like, I need to actually be more anticipating it than sort of the visual timing. Because I'm that, feeling that, like that it glows, reading. I hit, I parry. But it's almost like you got to, Anticipate the glow like a little bit, like so it was kind of off the way the game was trying to telegraph. To that, that last duel to me felt like it was it was a very clear case of not exactly style over substance, but the 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 fight existed more in service of where the story wanted to end mm -hmm. up. Yeah, than it was something that is mechanically satisfying. Well, they did the same thing with Enslaved too. Mm -hmm. I thought where it was just kind of like you bust into the room and there's Andy Circus and you're like. Punch. Right. Well, I did it. Right. right. I saved the world. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, like, right. It's like there's a last boss because yeah. there is expected to be a last boss. Exactly. But what they really yeah. want to do is tell an ending to the story. Uh, and in that sense, like the brother against brother, you know, the sort of thematic clash. Yes. Uh, I did think the one line that he gives right at the end where they're all standing on the ledge, like kind of surveying the land after everything. Which is goes, completely devastating. Right. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> we did it. But, but, but like, the sun's coming out and Mundus is vanquished. Yeah. You're like, all right, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden Virgil's like, all right, now we can rule. Free from the demons. The path is clear for us to rule. 
and it was just like so on the nose and yeah. obvious, like. You couldn't have found a little more subtle way to communicate that this guy. I wants feel like to, we could have built that up a little right, bit more, right, just guys. Sort of, it was sort of out of left field the way he said it. You know. It oh no! Weird. It was just. It was like, is it my time? Is it my time to get yeah, evil? Oh, thank of, you, thank you, thank you. Can I put very my much. crown on now? You know, like. But, I'm getting the wrap it up and get evil right. sign. But but, I, but once they had <laughs> once they had fought, you know, once the battle had commenced and and like there's the scene where he's like driving the sword yeah. into his chest and like I felt like. There was kind of grueling emotion going on there, like, I can't let you do this. Visually, that storytelling, no, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I can agree. Now, obviously, with the revelation that Virgil's, well, he wants it all to himself, yeah. um, that sets it up for that there could be sequels. I'm just wondering, kind of in our final assessment here, like, was this a successful enough reboot, both creatively, and I think we can even say commercially, that mm -hmm. we can see Ninja Theory or someone else sort of take this new fangled DMC and go somewhere with I think it. Creatively, absolutely. Like the, the last like 90 seconds of the game where the, the camera sort of pans around on Dante and like you feel like he has he's gone through some stuff. He has had a character arc, you know, he's not that kind of snide club guy from the beginning of the game, you know, like he actually has something that he cares about now. It's like end. Parker Posey and Party Girl. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you know, like in that last shot, you know, you feel like, all right, this is this is Dante, you know, like this is where he's going, you know, he's got something to springboard off of. But uh, Virtually, I don't know. Like, the, it seems like you know, Capcom lowered their forecast on shipped copies for the year and stuff. So who knows? Who knows how that's going to play I'd out. love to see them get the chance to do another one because yeah. I think there were there were moments in there that were brilliant. Mm. I love like the the club based reality party game show on the dance floor. Yep. Like, yep. I love I love things. There are great ideas in there that if they actually are allowed to take them farther next time, tighten up some of that combat and stuff, and keep that kind of weird frantic strange, dark sense of humor about it, I would absolutely play a second one. I think so. I mean, I think the combat's there and there's more to play with. I think, yeah, if, if they really invest in a consistency in the weirdness, mm -hmm. so that they, like, there's that sense that every level is going to just bring something that's even nuttier than what already e ever happened. I think the arch storytelling and characterization will probably be a lot more palatable to me. But uh, so I guess it's not our decision to make. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we have now come to the conclusion of Spoiled Games. Devil May Cry, uh, Brad Shoemaker from Giant Bomb. Yep. Your review can be read at yep. giantbomb.com. Absolutely. Um, Anthony Carboni of D News. You can see him multiple times a day, and, and you can spend a whole day just looking at him over there at D News. It's a weird, it's a weird thing to do. You can do it. <laughs> yes, you can. I do it all the time. <laughs> and me, of course, you can see my review of Devil May Cry at youtube.com slash rev3games. We're going to be back talking about another game. This one should be uh, very interesting because it probably has the greatest consensus of any game this year. It's Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah. It's pretty short. If you want to give it a shot at it, that's fine. But I hope you come and join us for uh, yet another discussion. A, a, a thoughtful discussion of varied opinions in the game industry on Spoiled Games. <laughs>